This adventure story begins by showing a very large town surrounded by huge walls on all sides. The townspeople believe that there is a magical world on the other side of the wall. Although everyone wanted to see that other world, no one who went there had ever returned. Now, we are introduced to a boy named Dustin living in that town. He was eager to see the other world beyond the wall, so Dustin began to distract on the wall. As soon as its attention was diverted, he jumped over the wall and went to the other side. Dustin walked continuously until he reached a very large market. This was a magical market where quite strange things were found. As Dustin moved forward, he met a princess named Una, who was kept captive by a dangerous witch and forced to sell flowers to customers. Dustin and Una saw each other for the first time and liked each other. They talked very nicely, and after a while, Una took Dustin to a corner where they spent a wonderful time together. After all this, Dustin returned to his town. Nine months passed while Dustin lived in his town. Suddenly, a stranger came to Dustin's house, carrying a baby in a basket. This was none other than Dustin and Una's child. Dustin lovingly named his son Tristan and decided to raise him. Now, we are shown a few years later when Tristan has grown up. Tristan had fallen in love with a girl named Victoria and was carrying many flowers to propose to her. Tristan was calling out to Victoria from under her house, but just then, the richest boy in town, named Hump, arrived there because he also wanted to marry Victoria. Hump started putting Tristan down because he was very poor. Hump said, I have a lot of money, and I will propose to Victoria by giving her a very expensive ring. Tristan felt very bad about this, but he still went to talk to Victoria. Victoria simply told Tristan that Hump was going to give her a very expensive ring and propose marriage to her. Tristan was emotional, so he assured Victoria that no matter what, he would bring her a more expensive ring and marry her forever. Now we are shown a king in a very large kingdom who was taking his last breaths and was about to die. Therefore, he had to choose who would become the new king. To make this decision, the king took off a bracelet from his neck and told his sons that whoever gets this bracelet will become the new king of the kingdom. Saying this, the king breathed his last and passed away. However, the king's sons thought it would be an easy task to get the bracelet. But as soon as they went to take the bracelet, it flew out on its own at great speed and went straight into the sky, colliding with a star and causing a big explosion. After that, the bracelet started falling straight into a forest. This was the same place where Dustin and Victoria were sitting and enjoying themselves. They both saw the falling star, and Dustin asked Victoria if she would marry him if he brought her that lovely falling star. Victoria jokingly said yes, so Tristan decided to bring that star. As soon as the star fell into the forest, it transformed into a lady named Lynn. Sensing Lynn's energy, three dangerous witches in the forest realized her presence and were very excited to kill Lynn and eat her heart because the more beautiful hearts the witches ate, the more beautiful they became. Among them, a witch named Lamia came forward. She had another woman's heart, which she ate immediately and became young and beautiful. Lamia looked very beautiful, and without delay, she set out to find Lynn in the forest. Now we see Dustin, who is Tristan's father. Dustin understood that Tristan was going through the same phase he went through, falling in love with Victoria. So. Dustin gave Tristan his mother's last keepsake. Dustin told his son Tristan that his mother was imprisoned by a witch, who used a talisman to keep her captive. He also gave Tristan a bucket containing some other items his mother had kept. There was a black candle with a letter written on it. In that letter, Tristan's mother, Una, clearly mentioned that if he lit the candle and thought of her, he would be teleported directly to her. To test this, Dustin lit the candle and asked Tristan to think of his mother, but Tristan was thinking about the falling star instead. As a result, he was instantly teleported to the star, which was now Lynn. Lynn was very scared by this and stepped aside, explaining that she had fallen from the heights of the sky and landed here. When Tristan realized that Lynn was the star, he tied her up with his hands and said that he would present her to Victoria, marry her, and be very happy. Lynn began to stare at Tristan intently. Now we see the three sons of the deceased king, who were drinking with many of their soldiers. However, at the very next moment after drinking, many brothers and soldiers were killed because a brother named Septimus had poisoned the drink. 
However, a brother named Primus already knew this, so he didn't drink, but he was very scared by Septimus's actions because both wanted the throne of the entire kingdom. Meanwhile, we see the witch Lamia, who had taken on a human form, turning a man into a sheep on which she rode to continue her journey. She needed to capture Lynn and absorb her beauty. At the same time, we see Tristan moving forward through the forest with Lynn. Due to the delay, Tristan tied Lynn to a tree and said, I'll bring you something to eat. He then headed toward the water to catch some fish. However, after a short while, a beautiful unicorn horse appeared before Lynn. It was sent to free her. The horse quickly untied Lynn, and she rode away on it. Meanwhile, Lamia had searched the entire forest but couldn't find Lynn. So, she approached her two witch companions and said, I need to find her location to see where Lynn is. The two witches performed a ritual, looking into the eye of a crocodile to determine Lynn's location. They informed Lamia that Lynn was approaching on a unicorn, presenting them with the perfect opportunity to capture her. Lamia immediately used her magic to transform two sheep back into humans and, with the help of dark magic, created a large house that looked like a hotel, complete with all resources. Lamia's plan was for Lynn to arrive and stay in this hotel, where the witches could capture and kill her, taking her heart. She made this plan with all her men and moved forward. In the forest, when Tristan returned with food for Lynn, he found she was gone. Furious, Tristan lay down under the tree to sleep. Suddenly, he had visions of Lynn being tortured, surrounded by dangerous creatures preparing to sacrifice her. Tristan felt someone calling for his help, sensing that he had to save Lynn as soon as possible, or she'd be killed. Terrified, Tristan opened his eyes and saw a horse-drawn carriage approaching. He immediately started following it, seeking permission to ride inside. The man who stepped out of the carriage was none other than Primus. He immediately took Tristan into his carriage, and they continued moving forward. Meanwhile, Lynn, after a long journey, had arrived at the very hotel Lamia had created to trap her. Once inside, Lamia took great care of Lynn, even giving her a nice massage in a room. Lynn had no idea, though, that Lamia was secretly drawing a knife to kill her, intending to take out her heart to eat it and become young again. But at that moment, there was a knock on the door. It was Tristan and Primus who had traveled to the hotel. When the door opened, they both entered, causing Lamia to postpone her plan to kill Lynn. Primus, upon seeing a bathtub, jumped in to bathe, while Tristan parked his horse in a safe spot. Hearing the voices, Lynn came to the scene. When Primus saw the locket around Lynn's neck, he demanded it from her, advancing to attack Lynn. But Lamia intervened, slitting Primus's throat, killing him like his brothers in his quest for the bracelet. It was then that Tristan and Lynn realized Lamia's true nature, that she was a dangerous witch after Lynn. Tristan immediately stepped in front of Lynn to protect her. Lamia advanced toward them, setting the entire hotel on fire to prevent anyone from escaping. With no options left, Tristan suddenly pulled out the black candle his mother Una had given him from his tongue. He quickly lit the candle and told Lynn to think of her home. As soon as Lynn did so, they teleported to her home. However, Lynn didn't have a home on Earth. She lived in the sky. So, unknowingly, they both ended up above the clouds. Tristan was very angry with Lynn, blaming her for getting them into trouble again after they had just escaped. While they were arguing, suddenly, a net was thrown over Lynn and Tristan, capturing them harshly. It was a massive ship with many pirates on board. Magical pirates who sailed not on water but above the clouds. The captain of these pirates was observing Lynn and Tristan closely and decided to take them with him somewhere far away. Meanwhile, we are shown Septimus, standing by the dead body of Primus, furious over his brother's death. He couldn't understand how there was a hotel here not long ago, but now it had vanished. Septimus immediately brought out the man who had been hiding, the one Lamia had turned from a goat into a human. When Septimus threatened the man, asking what had happened, he revealed everything. That it was Lamia, the witch who had done this. She was after Lynn, who possessed the amulet, and wanted to kill her and eat her heart to become powerful and beautiful. Now that Septimus knew everything, 
he was determined to get Lin's amulet at any cost. So, he set off with his men and the man in the direction where Lin and Tristan might be found. Then, we see the pirate captain who had captured Lin and Tristan, interrogating them about where they had come from. Tristan finally revealed the truth, saying he belonged to a settlement called the V.L., a very beautiful place where he had lived since childhood. All the other pirates listened intently to what the captain would decide. The captain, however, became very angry and pretended to throw Tristan off the ship. Lynn was crying, believing Tristan was dead. But when they went inside, she saw that Tristan was perfectly safe and standing right in front of her. Then the captain revealed to them both that this had all been part of his plan. The captain had devised the plan to protect Lynn and Tristan from the other pirates because he knew they didn't trust him and were up to no good. The captain considered Tristan a good boy because he came from a settlement called The Wall. The captain's father used to tell him many stories about The Wall when he was a child. The captain sat down and asked Tristan many questions about The Wall settlement. Tristan shared many exciting things about the magical events that had occurred there. Hearing these stories after so long made the captain very happy, and soon a good friendship developed between the three of them. The captain showed them the costumes he had made and collected, which were amazing and unique. After a short while, the captain stopped his ship at a port where he wanted to sell something to a man named Freddy. The captain was selling Freddy a device that could store electricity. After receiving some money, the captain returned to his ship. Suddenly, Tristan came out in front of all the pirates wearing the clothes carefully preserved by the captain, which made him very happy. The captain declared that Tristan and Lynn were meant for each other and should stay together. Although the other pirates were not pleased with this, they had to follow the captain's orders. So they continued on, intending to drop Tristan and Lynn near the wall settlement. During the journey, the captain taught Tristan many sword fighting techniques, which Tristan quickly learned. They continued to sail through the depths of the ocean. Shortly thereafter, the captain dropped Tristan and Lynn near the wall settlement. He even gave Tristan the device to store electricity. Tristan and Lynn bid farewell to the captain and the other pirates and went on their way. Now, we see Septimus, who had traveled directly to the captain. He attacked the captain severely, demanding to know the whereabouts of two people named Lynn and Tristan. The captain was severely injured, but he didn't reveal anything about them. To protect himself, the captain immediately summoned all his pirates, which scared Septimus greatly, causing him to dive into the water and flee. This meant that his search continued, as he desperately wanted to find the locket. Meanwhile, we see Lynn and Tristan walking toward their settlement when they spot a witch on a horse-drawn carriage. She was the same witch who had imprisoned Tristan's mother, Una, who was still with her, transformed into a bird. Tristan quickly approached the witch with Lynn and asked her for a lift to their home. The witch knew very well who Tristan was, so she asked what she would get in return. Suddenly, the dangerous witch demanded a small flower from Tristan's body. Tristan, unaware of its significance, handed over the flower to the witch. The moment he did, the witch immediately transformed Tristan into a mouse because it turned out that the flower had been protecting him from the beginning, given to him by his father. Lynn tried her best to stop the witch, but she too fell under a spell. The witch couldn't detect Lynn's existence and proceeded with Tristan, now a mouse. Lynn was determined to help Tristan and followed them. In the marketplace, the witch returned Tristan to his normal form, with Lynn by his side. Tristan was exhausted, so Lynn took him to a hotel. It was there that Tristan realized he was in love with Victoria and wanted to marry her. Leaving Lynn at the hotel, Tristan went off alone. When Lynn woke up later and couldn't find Tristan, she also went outside to look for him. She asked a servant about him, who informed her that Tristan loved Victoria and had left to pursue her. This revelation deeply saddened Lynn because she, too, had started to fall in love with Tristan. Lynn, feeling very sad, started walking further into the market. Tristan's mother, Una, who had returned to her normal form, approached her. Una kept warning Lynn that if she crossed the wall, she would turn completely into ashes, but Lynn wasn't listening to anyone. Una was also bound by the witch and couldn't go much further. Meanwhile, Tristan directly approached Victoria and gave her a lock of Lynn's hair, 
saying, I haven't brought you a star, but a small piece of one. However, Tristan fully confessed that he had started liking Lynn. Soon, Hump arrived with a very expensive ring for Victoria. Tristan tried to tell Victoria that he was the best choice for her and that she should marry him. But when Victoria looked at the hair given by Tristan, she saw it had turned completely into ash. Noticing this, Tristan realized that if Lynn crossed the wall, she would turn entirely into ashes. So he immediately ran towards the wall to save her. Lynn was about to reach the wall, and behind her, we see Una, who had freed herself from the witch's captivity, driving forward in a car. Una quickly reached out and grabbed Lynn's hand, stopping her from going further. She explained that Lynn was not an actual person but a message, which would be destroyed if it crossed the wall. Realizing this, Lynn decided not to cross the wall. But at that moment, the same dangerous which appeared from behind and used her dark powers to capture Una, trying to drag her away to imprison her again. Fortunately, another witch named Lamia also arrived at the scene. As soon as Lamia saw the other witch in front of her, she began to attack her with her dark powers. A fierce battle ensued between them, during which Lamia became much more powerful and used more than half of her strength to kill the other witch. However, during the process of the fight, Lamia became very weak, and her face turned very ugly. Therefore, Lamia deliberately took Una and Lin captive and left with them. She was ready to perform all the rituals to become more beautiful. Meanwhile, we see Tristan, who had arrived near the wall, having seen the destruction of the entire vehicle, was extremely worried about what had happened to Lin. Christine guessed that Lin must have been kidnapped by the witches, so he quickly mounted his horse and started pursuing them. At the same time, Septimus also arrived, searching for Lin and wanting to obtain her bracelet. Septimus also began to chase Tristan, as they were both heading to the same location. Now, we see Lamia who wanted to sacrifice Lin. She began preparing and arranging everything according to the ritual. Soon, Tristan reached the location, but Septimus immediately confronted Tristan with a knife. However, Tristan wasn't easily intimidated and countered with a knife of his own. Both of them understood each other's conditions and sat down to talk. Septimus told Tristan that he needed Lin, and he wanted the bracelet around Lin's neck. They agreed to work together to kill all the witches and end their threat. Christine liked this plan, so they both secretly entered the area. When Septimus reached a lady, who was none other than Una, they were both shocked to see each other. Una was Septimus's sister, and he was very happy to see her alive. But then, a dangerous witch attacked Septimus, and he became busy fighting. Meanwhile, Una went directly to Tristan and revealed that she was his mother. Christine was also shocked and realized that Una was indeed his mother. We then see Lamia, who had created a small doll with her dark magic and connected it to Septimus's body. Whatever Lamia did with the doll happened to Septimus as well. Lamia even broke the doll's arms and legs, causing Septimus significant pain. Finally, Lamia submerged the doll in water, making Septimus drown, and he soon perished from the torment. Septimus's soul departed along with his other brothers, and they were all dead. As Tristan was heading to rescue Lin, another witch attacked him. Tristan tried his best to fight the witch, and he suddenly opened all the cages where the animals were held. The animals began to pour out, and they attacked the two witches. Since the witches had a poor attitude towards animals, the animals quickly killed both witches, leaving only Lamia. Tristan wanted to rescue Lin as soon as possible, but Lamia continued to attack him with dark energy. However, Tristan was unaffected because he had the magical flower given to him by his mother. When Lamia saw the dead bodies of her two sisters, she became deeply sorrowful and angry. She retrieved the doll from the water and began to control Septimus's dead body, making it attack Tristan. Although Tristan was also under attack, he eventually dropped a large chandelier on Septimus, sending him flying. Tristan managed to rescue Lynn successfully. Seeing this, Lamia declared that she could not live without her sisters and if they were dead, she would die as well. She told Tristan and Lynn that they could leave, and they started to move away, believing her words. But it was revealed that this was a trap. Lamia blasted all the glasses in an attempt to kill them. Christine, 
unable to understand what to do in this critical condition, was suddenly embraced by Lin. Lin began to shine brightly, as she was a star with the ability to emit such light. The light was so powerful that it completely eradicated the evil. The light destroyed Lamia entirely. Soon after, Tristan picked up a pendant lying on the ground, which contained a diamond. He touched the diamond in his hand, and the diamond changed color to red, after which Una approached her son and said that it meant only he was worthy of becoming the true king. At this point, the magic performed by the king was completely undone because their empire had found its new ruler. With this, the souls of all the brothers were also completely freed. Una was very happy about this, and in the next moment, Tristan was declared the king of the entire empire. Tristan married Lin in a wonderful ceremony and began to manage his empire very well. And with this happy ending, our story comes to a close.